Millions of people live with or have suffered from mental health issues and most people still have to get up and go to work even if that feels extremely difficult. Yes, Ben's been looking at the issue this morning. Ben, since we've been talking about that this morning, lots of people getting in touch with us uh, talking about how it's affected them. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a really important issue and that talking about it could be the key um, because it's very easy for businesses, isn't it, to talk about health and safety. And in some respects, the safety bit's the easiest because it's about making sure people don't have accidents at work, any trips and falls and that sort of thing. But health and particularly mental health is very difficult because there's no one set cause, there's no one set solution. And actually it can manifest itself maybe two or three years down the line, maybe when you've moved on from the place that you were working. So very important that businesses do more to help the staff that they have. Well, with me, two people who can probably explain a little bit more. We've got Stephen, who's the boss here at the Institute of Directors. You're launching the big campaign today. And Sam, you're a partner in a city law firm and you know exactly what we're talking about, don't you? You face this. Just, Give us a taste of what happened to you. Look, I don't think you know, I don't think you can say exactly what causes um, periods of depression and, and ill health, but um, for me it was, it was a prolonged period of sleeplessness, exhaustion, um, crying covertly behind my computer screen. And then I remember, clear as, as a bell, sitting at my desk and just not being able to read the paper in front of me, turning pages, and I had no idea what was going in and I was terrified that I couldn't do my job anymore. And at what point do you realise that this was something more than maybe just a bad day or a bad week or a bad month and it was something that maybe you needed to get help for? I don't think I admitted it to myself um, when I actually um, probably realised it. Um, I went to a GP and I asked for help to sleep. I think I was probably asking for more help. And over a couple of months of going to see her eventually, she referred me to a psychiatrist, um, which I absolutely you know floored me I was taken there sort of kicking and screaming best thing I did mm. uh, and Stephen here at the Institute of Directors you're launching this big campaign it's a mental health initiative to get some of your members you've got 30,000 members talking about this and what they can do to help staff why is it so important to do it now um, we did a recent survey and the survey told us that over half of our members had been approached directly by the staff concerning men mental ill health and that's just a, you know, a big, big statistic. And it affects the productivity that we have in this country, that it's a massive impact if, if staff are not, help, are not happy, um, they're, they're not gonna perform to their best ability at work, which affects business and, and affects everything. So it's not just a you know, moral reason for doing, there's a, a logic to it for a business point of view. Mm. And, and you might say it's very easy for big business to try and do this. You can have a dedicated mental health first aid. Yeah. You can put the time and the resources into doing it. What about smaller firms, ones that have got just a few employees? Um, we recognise the challenge for smaller firms because they don't have the big resource there, they don't have the HR departments. So what we're actually launching today is online resources, pointing people where to go for help because there's lots of help out there, but people aren't even aware it's there. Less than 20% of our members are aware of a single initiative that the government's introduced in the past couple of years. That's very worrying. So what we can do is business leaders is to put forward where, where to go to for help and how to get it. Mm. And, and Sam, when you were in that position, did you have somewhere to go for help? Because I'd imagine there's two things come into play. One, having the availability of help, but also, I guess, the stigma of not wanting to go to your boss and say, look, I have a problem. Yeah. I think that's absolutely the case. Um, we, we had resources available internally. We, you know, we still do. Um, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't have wanted to use them. I, I wouldn't have wanted yeah. to put my head above the parapet. Whereas I think now, the, the really key point is normalizing yeah, yeah. The, the discussion yeah. so that it, there's one hopes less of a stigma yeah. for people who need to put their hands up and Stephen, briefly i mean you're nodding here it is that stigma that could be the biggest challenge it's, it's a massive stigma that which we've got to get rid of the, the, there should be no taboo there should be no stigma about talking about mental health it affects everyone either directly or indirectly and we've all got to work together and remove that stigma and support each other uh, really good to talk to you both. Thank you for sharing those stories. Uh, we're going to be here all morning. We're going to talk about this a little bit more, but keep your comments coming in because I know it's something that affects many, many people. Give us an indication of what it is that you went through, maybe how you got help and what it's meant for you since. So we're going to talk more about this after eight and I'll see you a little bit later. I'm sure lots of uh, people will relate to so much of what they were saying. Um, thank you very much indeed. And thank you everybody uh, for getting in touch and telling us your stories as well. Yes, details of organisations offering information and support with mental health are available at bbc.co.uk 
uh, action line, or you can call for free anytime to hear recorded information on 08000 Six. Just leave that number uh, up on the screen for a moment longer. That's the BBC Action Line if you need any more information. And actually, we will, of course, repeat that as well and put it on our social media. Um, you are watching Breakfast from BBC News. Still to come this morning. London headquarters for us this morning. It's a real problem, this, isn't it, Ben? Yeah, Charlie, you're right, it is, but it's something that business is now trying to take seriously. We're here, as you said, at the Institute of Directors. It represents about uh, 30,000 members. Uh, they can be big and small organisations up and down the country. Um, and they are launching an initiative today to get more businesses talking about the issue because it's very easy for business to talk about health and safety and in some respects the safety element is the easiest one to look after because it just means stopping accidents in the workplace. It's something that you can measure on a chart. But health is much more difficult, especially mental health, because there is no set cause of it, there's no set solution. And as I've been finding out this week, it can happen to people anytime, anywhere. No matter where you work, tough days are often part of the job. But for construction worker Lee, difficult days turned into difficult weeks and months. I just felt down one day and um, I stood at the top of the building and just went to the edge of the building, so about six storeys high. I unhooked all my harness and everything and just stood there and thought it would be better if, uh, better if I was dead. And then I started to think, because I'm a carer for my nan, I started to think who's going to look after her. And new figures suggest Lee's experience is much more common than we might think. Nearly a sixth of the UK's workforce faces mental health problems. And it's here on building sites that the problem is all too evident. More construction workers lose their lives through suicide than serious accidents at work. And it's something the industry is working hard to address. It's very difficult to recognise in individuals whether there's a problem uh, until it's too late. And this is why we need to do something now and actually raise awareness within our industry with, with our workers and actually get people trained up in the same way that you would treat an injury with a first aider to actually help people before you get to the stage where the worst case scenario is people are thinking about suicide. But it's not just industries like construction that are tackling mental health. Aside from the personal impact on staff, it costs the UK economy around £26 billion a year in lost work and productivity. So business is paying attention, like the department store chain Debenhams. Its chairman told me of his personal experience dealing with mental health problems and why he wants to do more to help staff. I've had family members, um, uh, including one of my sons, uh, who's had a real, um, very, very specific challenge. And I found myself being hesitant talking about it. Whereas if I'd said, oh, he's broken his leg or he's got a very bad, you know, infection, that would have been fine and we could all talk about it. And I thought, if I can't talk about it, this is, this is ridiculous. And I've got to find ways and means of making this, uh, as I said, more normal, more everyday conversation uh, and not something you have to pretend to sort of hide away. Do you want to get a coffee yeah. or something for me? And that's the basis of schemes like this one at the Royal Mail. It encourages staff to talk about their worries with trained mental health first aiders. It's training up individuals to really understand mental health issues. It's just to help you cope with ways of being able to stay at work and do your job while dealing with your mental health. For Lee, who is now managing his depression, talking is part of the answer. But he says simple changes can make a big difference. A few months after I actually came off my medication, one of the site managers at where I was at the time actually just come up and asked me how was I doing and was everything okay. So she's the first person that's ever actually asked and that's what I feel will make the biggest difference I think with a lot of people. So some really important issues there raised in that piece. We're going to talk more about it over the course of the morning. We'll hear some more personal stories and crucially about why it's so, it's so important to talk about this. The fear of talking to your boss maybe is putting many people off, but clearly the message from today is talk about it, get help when you need it. We'll hear more stories from here in about half an hour's time. Uh, thank you, uh, Ben. Thank you so much. And so many people are getting in touch with us as well. Thank you for telling us your stories. Um, if you want details of organisation offering information and support with mental health,